How we doing everybody? Welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers and today we're going to talk about the drawing view. When I first switched from Flash into Harmony, the drawing view kind of threw me off a little bit. What didn't quite grasp what the purpose of it even, what purpose it even served. Um, and through the course of time I did kind of come to really appreciate the drawing view and what it would do for me. So why don't we hop on into Harmony. Uh, we have this guy again and I think I'm going to start off with a very common error or a very common mistake that appears and we'll just start off by giving his arm a little bit of animation we'll stick it and we'll just make it go straight out have it just go, and we'll even have it overshoot a little bit go up a little bit and the hand can go up a little bit and we can even put some ease on it and now, bam, voila, looks pretty good, right? Uh, what I think I'd like to do is add a little bit of drag to the hand. Like right around here, and by drag I mean just have it kind of, you know, delaying it a little bit. And that looks okay. Um, I think I can make it better by changing the, by changing the, uh, the hand. So I think what I'll do is I'll make a new hand make a new layer um, let's just make sure we have the proper color yep and I'm going to just draw the fingers delaying a little bit give the hand a little bit of bend and we'll seal that off yep great looks pretty good all right and turn my onion skin off and we'll zoom back out and we'll hit play again and oh wait a minute wait hmm the hand doesn't look correct it's popping off oh I know why it's because I didn't fix the anchor point or the pivot point so surely if I fix the anchor point it'll wait a minute why is it doing this well I can tell you why. I'm going to pull, call you back to a previous tutorial about keyframes versus drawings and how keyframes are very separate from our drawings. Keyframes being our, hey, let me pull up my little, I have my little handy dandy hot highlighter. Keyframes are our little dots here in our timeline and they are what is recording any rotation, position, etc. Uh, information that is happening to our layers, right? Uh, where the drawings themselves are a separate entity. That is the thing. That is the vector information defining the fingers, the color, so forth. They're two separate things. They do totally two totally different things. And what I can do now to help fix this is one of two things. One, I could probably just sit here and use my transform tool and kind of crowbar the hand back in there, and it probably would work, sort of, but not really. The best thing to do would be to use the drawing view. And so if I could, I'll step into my drawing view and there's my hand. If I was to pull up my onion skin, there's the original hand down here. As you can see, they're in two totally different places. And that is because the there was already some animation that was applied to our layer. And I think the best way to help describe that if we don't get too lost would be to pull up this little first let me just zonk this let's just put the hand back I have a layer here called rectangle and this rectangle if you can see it this red rectangle is parented to the hand so it's going to inherit inherit all the transformation and rotation keyframe information and so it's following the hand around it's doing what you think it would do. It's it, This rectangle is supposed to represent the boundaries of our piece of paper, if you will. If you can imagine the hands as a stack of paper, uh, the rectangle is defining that stack of paper kind of being pushed around by the, the deformation of the arm and so forth. And when we swip, swap in, let me find that frame. When we swap in our new hand, watch what happens to the rectangle. Boop. And this is because the the layer or the sh the papers, if you can imagine in your head, already kind of had like a bit of a rotation going on to them. So when I drew the new hand in there, it wasn't in the exact same place 
that the original hand was. And that is where our drawing view comes into play. The drawing view strips out any transformations that are being applied to our layer so that it can help us easily see, help us easily see, there you are, uh, where things are falling off. So in this case, all we need to do is to grab our hand, drag it down, and we can correct the, the pivot point. We could do it one or two, we can either manually just grab it down here, or with our pivot tool selected, we can go back to our previous frame. We can, with the drawing view being the active window, I can hit control or I can hit copy and paste. And it's copying and pasting our pivot points. Now our pivot points are exactly in the same spot. If I step back out to our camera, and let me hide this rectangle, Our hand now works. And again, I can draw your attention to, um, well, why don't we draw a new hand? So like, maybe like around here, we'll have the, thing, the hand go into like a point. And I wanna draw your attention to the pivot point if I can. The second I hit new drawing, the pivot point will probably kick to around here someplace. See if you can keep your eye on it. There, it actually went to around here. This is kind of the zero point of the new drawing. It's slightly off center, but that's because again, it's inheriting all of the transformation information of its of its parent. In this case, it's a deformation. So every time you hit a new drawing, it wants to reset the pivot point to its zero point, and then it will also inherit all of the parenting information, which is why our hands and everything kind of gets shuffled off. So the best thing to do, the best way to kind of wrangle this is to, before you start drawing anything, is to correct your pivot point. Sometimes it gets a little goosey, and if you kind of just, there you go. If you correct your pivot point first, generally speaking, you will have better results. So let's make it into a point. And color it. And yes, as you can see, no, there's no mistakes. The, the pivot point is correct. So that's generally a pretty good workflow. When you put a new drawing down, the first thing to do would be to so let's make would be to put a put your anchor point down. Excuse me, your pivot point down first. Now another reason the drawing view kind of comes in the handy. That's a terrible hand. Uh, would be so if you wanted to actually make a in between, we can easily go into the drawing view and we can ice it isolates our parts a little clearer. So I can make a new drawing here, and now I can see the see just the hand. The hand is not inheriting any weird parenting information. I could more easily. I mean, again, these these not exactly the best uh, example. But and I'm using a stroke. There we go. So as you can see, using the drawing view, we can more easily just kind of focus on the hand. And I guarantee you, because I did not fix the pivot point, see it's up there someplace, the hand's probably gonna pop off. Yep, but guess what? We go back into our drawing view we can hit copy, no, copy, paste, go back to our camera, and there it is. The hand is now properly registered. Um, there's one thing I'd like to point out to you um, about the drawing view is something called the light table. Uh, because again, the drawing view only gives us what we are actively looking at. Uh, so if I hide him for now, let's just hide him, he's gone. I'm gonna make two layers, and we're gonna do our good old friends, the square, square, and circle, our good old buddies. All right, go to our camera view. Let's make sure we put them down. And so let's just make a rect, think like square here on the square layer, on the circle layer, we'll make, let me see if I have a red, something to, just so we can differentiate it, red. We'll make a, well, it would help if I use the oval tool, right? There we are. There's our circle. 
And now if I was to draw, step into my drawing view, all I can see is just my circle. But for, for whatever reason I wanted to see the square, I can hit this little light bulb up here. And again, it's showing me everything that's not already being hidden. So the deformer guy needs to be hidden. There, now he's gone. And so back to what I was saying. Oh yeah, so um, it's going, the light table will show us everything that's kind of being viewed in the camera view. And like I said before, it will always reset it. So if I take the circle and using the transform tool and just kind of scoot him over here someplace, if I go back into my drawing view, he's going to be back in the center. The drawing view will always reset everything back to where you drew it originally. So that's something to kind of keep in the back of your head. Um, another thing about the drawing view is that you cannot... Let's hide this stuff again. Let's get rid of this. We don't really need this anymore. We can pull back up our drawing view guy. Oh, and a bunch of... A bunch of... Some rough layers showed up there. We don't want any of that. And we can get rid of this rectangle too. Um, it's worth noting that we cannot hit play. Like I'm hitting play right now, I'm hitting enter, and nothing is happening as I am in the drawing view. I can, however, scrub, and we can see some animation happen as I scrub. But again, hitting enter in the drawing view does nothing for us. That's another thing just to kind of keep in the back of your head. The drawing view is all about drawing. It is not for previewing animation. It is all about the drawing and focusing only on the drawing. While I'm also in here, I'd like to also just point out one more thing. Let's just find that hand again. Where is it? Select it. Go back into my drawing view. If I, there's my hand. There's all my um, exposures for it. A handy dandy shortcut for you to get used to is F and G. Hitting F and G allows me to go forward and backward through the drawings that are exposed in the timeline. And this is also the truth out here in the camera view. If I select the hand, if I'm hitting F and G, it's just it's moving the time. I don't know if you can see it down here, but it's moving the, the timeline to where the exposures are. I'm using F and F and G as on my keyboard to go back and forth. Very handy shortcut for quickly finding where drawings are in your timeline view. And this can be totally collapsed. I can have it totally collapsed. And again, this is also how I really highly suggest you work in the first place is to keep things collapsed. For the sake of your sanity, I can still hit F and G, and it's going to cycle through all the drawings that are associated with that hand on that layer. One more thing I'd like to point out in the drawing view is how the onion skin works. And for this, let me just kind of move some of my exposures around. I'm going to break what I kind of did, but for the purpose of this demonstration. Um, in the camera view, the time the onion skin works like you think it would, like in Flash. So if I hit my onion skin, and there's the handles I'm pulling them around, and it's you can see the the onion skin happening there. It does not work the same in the drawing view. The onion skin works by you guessed it, drawing. So if I was to hit the onion skin, yes, we get the handles. However, and this is a bit of a leap. Uh, this is something I do not agree with with Toon Boom what they did in, in Harmony here, uh, but they are doing it a little more along the lines of, again, if it was a stack of drawings. And so if I was to extend the handle to the right only once, one click, it will show me the next drawing. And that drawing here, I'm gonna take them and drag them like way down in time. They're all the way down there. So if I take my handle and extend it by one, it's showing me the drawing all the way down here. If I extend it by two, it's going to. Sh you may not be. It may be hard to see, but I can see it on my preview. Um, it's showing me the next drawing, even though they are nowhere near each other. They're not falling underneath of the little umbrella that you may imagine in your head. The onion skin works differently. If I was to give it one more click, it's going to grab the next drawing after it. Same thing works with the other direction, and this definitely takes some getting used to. Uh, again, I don't agree with this. This took me a little while for me to even come to terms with. I didn't even understand it at first. Um, but that is what's happening in the drawing view. Like it or leave it. I think it's going to wrap it up for this uh, Tomb Boom Harmony tutorial. Um, if there's anything I missed in the drawing view, if there's anything I forgot, or if there's any questions you may have, 
uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. Please also feel free to click that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of my comings and goings. Please click some of that stuff there too. I have the original timeline tips, which is the beginning of this of my tutorials. And if you're just finding this video by either stumbling stumbling on through YouTube or elsewhere, the timeline tips is the best place to start. Uh, thank you very much, guys. You can check me out also on Google Plus, Twitter, uh, Tumblr. And I still have my blogger. I still keep. You may find the links uh, below in the description. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, guys. I hope to see you again soon, and take care.